All right, guys, we're here in front of Free Play Richardson. I've got Richard Tregilgis, Corey Hyden, founders of Free Play. Yeah! We're about to do the first ever official walkthrough of Free Play Richardson. Let's go. All right, guys, so one of the newest additions to Free Play Richardson is this kind of pinball area. It's kind of funky. We've got Slugfest, Williams' early 90s title when baseball cards were huge. We're the only place in the entire world that's putting out Slugfest on Free Play, still dispenses cards. Really, really cool. Mr. and Mrs. Back, totally old school, 1981, 1982. Got the hardest skill shot that's ever existed in the history of pinball right Not here. only one of the hardest, one of the best. People love it. And then probably the best new pinball in a long, long time. Total nuclear annihilation. We have a totally loaded unit from the factory. Maybe the best in the country right here, ready to play. Um, just amazing. So you, we hit you up with that. You pay $10 to come in. You can play all the games on free play. And then this is really, really special. There are plenty of arcades that say they have Dragon's Lair. We're the only free play arcade in the entire world right now that has a laser disc Dragon's Lair. Original laser disc, original player, original everything working perfectly. We've got the world record set on this machine. Twin Galaxies hasn't recognized that yet, but they will. Then we've got, you know, your monster hits, your jousts, your berserks, Donkey Kong, Cubert. All right, and now we come to <laughs> a totally dedicated Major Havoc. Amplifone monitor, all original. I mean, they say they made 300, 400 of these ever. Uh, probably the most collectible, and just this one is as good of a condition you'll find in any collection, period. Here at Free Play, you pay $10 to come in. You can touch this machine. You can play this machine. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. Uh, then we have a color tapper, one of 100 ever. Uh, Lauren Featherstone did not break the world record on this machine, but she plays it all the time. It's amazing. She's amazing. And I mean, one of 100. How can you do better? Then we've got a Gauntlet playing Gauntlet 2 right now because Gauntlet 2 is on Free Play. Gauntlet 1 is not, but it's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, we were, this was probably the most requested game for a long time that oh, we didn't absolutely. have on the floor. We brought it out, it's been really popular. Uh, we're gonna keep it all original Atari joysticks or Atari buttons. Uh, I mean, no one else is running this in a free play arcade, but we are. All right, so now we're gonna go check out some games we recently had on Game of the Week episodes on our YouTube account. Uh, probably Richard's favorite games in this arcade. Absolutely. We've got a Mechtronics Fire Escape. Uh, just the coolest story. Go check out that game of the week. I mean, totally skill-based game. Uh, and we use these games to raise money from North Texas Food Bank. Tens of thousands of dollars we've raised. Uh, they've been amazing. We love these games. We love that we're using them to raise money. Ice Cold Beer, of course, by Taito is entirely like one of the most famous <laughs> vertical anything games. Vertical pinball, it doesn't matter. Um, and of course, yeah, I mean, you are probably the best in free play at either of these games World right class now. at both of these games, at least. Uh, we'll see, maybe one of these days I'll go for the world record. All right, so we're gonna head over, we're gonna check out our cocktails. The cocktail lineup changes so often because, I mean, truthfully, most people kind of pass these by. But this is really special. This is a dedicated, universal Mr. Do cocktail. Um, probably one of the rarest games we have not played very much at all. Crazy. <laughs> We just recently put this out as a filler game to kind of... Bubbles used to be here. We had a Williams, Williams Bubbles uh, that was crushing. We put Galaxian out just to fill the space while we repair our Bubbles. Amazing. Now right here, this is really cool. So this is probably the best Tetris we've ever played, we've ever had. It's a cocktail Tetris in a Street Fighter cabinet. <laughs> it's a Street Fighter sit-down cabinet by Dynamo. But it has worked perfectly for Tetris. Um, we rent, we've run tournaments, we've run world championships on this cabinet. Uh, and it is, it, I don't I don't know why you play Tetris any other way, at least Atari Tetris. And then we Not have a Mr. M or no, we have our Miss Pack right here running Speed Chip. Recently, uh, who was it? Someone set a million points on this game. They rolled it, they hit 1,062,000 points. Um, I mean, huge score, we're really proud. It's insane. All right, so then we come to our this is actually the rarest game in our collection somehow. <laughs> You've seen versions of this at other arcades. You've seen the American Pac-Man Battle Royale. You've never seen the Japanese Pac-Man Battle Royale. We've sent employees to Japan to try to find this. They cannot. <laughs> we have a $500 bounty out right now. Anyone who refers us a version of this that we end up buying, we will pay them $500. Absolutely. Um, but right now, as far as we're aware, this is the only one in America. Uh, the famous story is 
Namco programmed a Pac-Man Battle Royale as true to Pac-Man as possible, made it very, very authentic, and they tested with American audiences, and the American audience says it's too real, it's too authentic. Uh, we found out that everyone loves this game. This is our most popular game in the entire arcade, and uh, no one has any issues with the authenticity, how hard it is, whatever. It's perfect, it's amazing. We wanna buy more. If you know where one exists, $500 in your pocket if we buy it, happily, because this is the only one in America, we're pretty sure. This is our Blast City. It used to have Super Turbo, had Sexy Parodius for a little bit, but now we're running columns. We're just messing with it. We're having fun. Uh, in don't true, have all the marquees right, right now. In but... true Japanese format, this game changes all the time. Uh, and it's been crushing us columns. Oh, yeah. We've only had it out for a few days, but we already have high score challenges. We've got all these people just going and battling columns. Really cool Tetris style game, but totally different. Awesome. Okay. A Sinistar with speech. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Sinistar with speech is totally rare. 49 way joystick, totally rare. This is it. This is a working Sinistar. William Sinistar, one of the best games ever. We have the world record set on this. Another one Twin Galaxies doesn't recognize yet, but this is just an amazing cabinet. It's perfect. Next up, we have a six slot Neo Geo. We change our games every week. Uh, we have a totally custom modified marquee up here so that you see the game you're playing and it totally randomizes it. Six slots, ultra wide body, so that the players, the players were complaining they were a little too close. Not anymore on the six slot. Um, we're the only free player kid that I'm aware that has a six slot that's actually working. It's amazing. It's awesome. All right, then we come to our Black Tiger, right? So we released this for Ready Player One. Um, this is our one of the only full kit Black Tigers in the entire world. Uh, our friend Estel Van, friend of the arcade, amazing guy. He totally contributed a bunch of parts for this, and we built a Black Tiger. It took us a couple years, um, and then we, we had some other projects. <laughs> we had one of the coolest Ready Player One challenges. Um, if you haven't read the book Ready Player One, go read it, and you'll understand how special this game is. Uh, next up we have, I mean... A game that needs no introduction? Right, this is, a t this is tough because every game at Free Player Richardson is insane. This is probably the best new versus city in all of America. We've got a running Grandmaster Challenge, Super Turbo. Uh, we have the biggest Super Turbo audience in the United States at least. Oh, absolutely. Maybe in the world. Um, we've had challenge. We've had tournaments on this game that have rivaled any tournament ever. Travel players that have come to play this machine from all around the world. And this is, I mean, this was used during our spring tournament, our five thousand dollar, where we flew in a ton of the top tier Japanese players. Um, and it's beautiful. It's perfect. It's, it's out in it the world right great. now. You play. You pay ten dollars. You can play this as much as you want. Unbelievable. All right, another fun one right here. Yeah. So we have. A black and white vector XY game, Red Baron. Um, we never even thought we'd be able to put this out. It's amazing. It's and amazing it, it, that it exists and that right, we can put it on right. free play. Well, we've, I mean, it's taken everything that we have, but we still have it on the floor. Um, and hopefully it'll be on the floor for a long time to come. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Robotron, of course, mentioned in Ready Player One again. <laughs> Another great game. These sticks recently rebuilt. That's something that we do, though, is. We buy new old stock parts so that we can constantly bring these games back to their original condition. Right. Uh, Dig Dug, this was a launch game for us, so was Robotron, mm -hmm. but this is this game has been on our floor since we opened, and it has moved all over the place. <laughs> uh, we did all sorts of Dig Dug challenges, all sorts of really cool stuff. Beat that Mad Max uh, score. Right, the Mad Max score from Stranger Things. We've done everything on this. It's right here now. It's still playing great. <laughs> um, and, I mean, it's ready for you at Freeplay Richardson. So this was one of the game, another game we never thought we'd get out. Oh, Daytona no. USA. Oh, it's huge. Right, it's massive, and it uses so many custom parts that most of the other arcades that used to run this game, they don't run it anymore. Mm -hmm. And we have it here on a free play floor. We bought four Daytona USAs just to feel comfortable enough to put one out. Oh, but here it is. It's, on, it's wonderful, it's awesome. All right, so this is one of the newest games we have out. Yep. Um, it's still in beta test. Still working on that force feedback right now. <laughs> Time crisis. That three. one works. <laughs> so we have force. So we've we've kind of come up with a totally new way to isolate the force feedback on a 24 volt line. Um, this one's working perfect. This one we're still in beta on, but I think when we figure it all out, we will have one of the only force feedback still working. Time crisis three by totally starting from the ground up and rebuilding. It's gonna be really cool. 
This was another game, I mean, same situation. We never thought we'd have it out, and here it is. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. Such a fun one. So Zombie Raid, we, we played it at Let's Play. I think we played Estelle Vance's. And, and we, we loved it so much we had to buy one for right. ours. And now we actually have two in rotation. There's two different art sets. This is uh, version one. The other art set is available at Free Play Arlington. Um, really cool game. Force feedback. You're just sh shotgunning zombies. Awesome. <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom. Awesome CPS2 game. Big fun. Um, I mean, yeah. And, and a beautiful cabinet. And what's really cool about this cabinet, though, is you can see all of the various <laughs> CPS2 games. It has X-Men, Children of the Atom, has a Street Fighter, <laughs> uh, Bezel. I mean, everything. It's crazy. It's amazing. Uh, Wide Body Mario Brothers. Wide Body Mario Brothers versus Dr. Mario. Totally oh, custom. Custom art package all produced around here. Um, just really cool. Someone's hobby project. We couldn't uh, convert it back to a versus Dr. Mario. Just generic cabinet. We loved it so much. We right. Keep it, it. It, I mean, it was a really good job. There it is. Satan's Hollow, an MCR game. Um, I mean, we released this and told all these people came out of the woodwork just to play it. Our, this is our stand-up mispack. In almost all of our arcades, we have two mispacks just because it's so popular. This one's running the super mispack version. Uh, one of the best. Um, and we're... It's been playing great. It's amazing because we have nearly a million plays on this game. Oh, absolutely. And it still plays great. I mean, we've had to rebuild it a hundred times, but it's amazing. Super Chase, probably the most kind of Miami style uh, <laughs> racing game that we have. We have to get kind of silly with racing games because they don't age as well. All right. But this is as goofy and amazing as it gets. Um, and yeah, it, it has a total Miami theme. You're jumping on cars, there's palm trees everywhere. It's outrun style, but still it's a with, little, with a little depth. Yeah. Gotta go through those. I mean, and, and then we have a game no one's ever heard of. Oh, no. Um, no one's ever seen any aspect of this. We don't Tron. have people who play this every single day or right. a special sign in the back that says to check for a certain person playing it. Well, right. So we, we have our, one of our best players is currently trying to build up to the world record right. on Tron. Um, kind of goofy. We have the Incom marquee, which is the, the company in the movie that uh, created Tron. But uh, it's been working great. We've had to replace the stick like six times. Like a million times. Yeah, it breaks constantly. It's so hard to keep going. But Every good arcade has to have a Tron. <laughs> so we have a Tron, and this is it. Fortunately, we've got a large back stock of uh, joysticks for it. Yeah, we're really lucky. So we have a beautiful Atari Star Wars right here. All right, so this is one of the only Atari Star Wars still running an Amplified monitor. We've had to do everything we could to keep this Star Wars going, but it's still one of the best not only in our collection. Almost everything. We have not put the brand new Amplifone monitor that we have into it yet. We, we, we do have a brand new Amplifone <laughs> monitor. We've been holding off. But this is one of the best playing Star Wars. One of the best Star Wars, period. Um, and it happens to be a free play Richardson just because it was the first. Um, and we've, we've now babied it. And, I mean, it's here. Brand new yokes. They've been replaced totally. Almost every component has been replaced or rebuilt at some point. Um, but it's one of those those classics. It's a short game. Everyone loves it. All right. Uh, surprisingly controversial <laughs> game. Golden T4 complete. Is it just the edition or? No, no, no. This is, this is definitely <laughs> the best edition of Golden <laughs> T. This is it. This is the one. If you have to have it, you should have it. But incredible people, technologies. They make some uh, yeah. incredible so, games. So yeah, IT is uh, you know not the best game manufacturer, but this is a fun game. This is a great version and. When it comes down to it, we have 150 beers available. We should have cool bar games like Golden Tea. It's um, a great way to kill some time. And I mean, it's sitting right next to an Amplifone Star Wars. <laughs> and one of the rarest games in the oh, entire yes. world. They never even released this in America. We're the only arcade that I'm aware of that even has one of these in America. <laughs> A Megatech fully populated. So we've got columns in here, which we, we had columns in our last city up there. We have Altered Beast, and we changed this regularly. Sonic the Hedgehog. So you can play Sonic on an arcade. No one even believed that this was a real game when we put it out. It's that good. We got E SWAT, Shadow Dancer, Ghouls and Ghosts. I mean, the boards alone inside this game are worth probably like as much as my house. It's insane. Golden X, Revenge of Shinobi, it just an absurd thing to even exist. Um, again, not released in America. And Running walk, all original components, and yeah, people walk right by it every all single the time. Day. Uh, it, it's really insane. It's absurd to even think about. And we've rotated the games in here numerous times, which not only do we have more than eight, 
We have more than 16. We can rotate the entire cycle multiple times. Uh, I mean, uh, we've had some people that have walked by, though, that have said, Whoa! Do y'all even know? And most people don't, though. It's it's just insane. Um, so here's a goofy game. <laughs> It's we fighting like games, games, especially well, yeah. fighting games. If we can include a goofy fighting game in our list, I mean, it's famously sponsored by Pepsi, <laughs> Fighting Vipers. I mean, it's it's <laughs> silly, but an awesome Sega game to put next to our Mega Tech. Uh, Galaga, every arcade has to have a Galaga. Uh, kind of similar to Donkey Kong Jr. Um, Donkey Kong Jr. is a lot harder than most people remember. Uh, I love the game. I mean, I think it's amazing, but look, high score of the day, 7,600? <laughs> I mean, easy score to beat, but it's a hard game. Most people who play it say, whoa, 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 I don't even remember anything like this. this I got hard. through the first level. Right. What do I do now? It, it, it gets crazy, but it's an awesome game. You gotta have it in a good arcade. Smash TV, Smash TV. same thing. Uh, I mean, the, the successor in interest to Robotron um, with amazing humor instead of just destroying aliens. You have a whole story in Smash TV. It's Collect awesome. those VCRs. This is... Hey! One of the best Gauntlet Dark Legacies in the world. We've rebuilt this thing so many with times. sweat and blood millions of times. The monitor is Slight bright, Chris. I don't even know <laughs> at this point. Um, but we have people who have put hundreds of hours on their character on this game. Oh yeah. They still remember their codes. What's really great is we took it off the floor and everyone was understanding. But the second it came back, everyone came back to revisit their character. I mean, just so cool, so awesome. Um, this was a launch game. Yeah. Uh, crazy to think It's been about. a launch game at almost all of our yeah, locations. I mean, the Gauntlet Dark Legacy or D Gauntlet Legends, great games to have out. People love them. Mortal Kombat 2, we've had since we opened. <laughs> well, every arcade has some Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3. This one's running the Mortal Kombat 2 Plus Beta ROMs, which I just had a message that said, these are going to be the big tournament ROMs next year. Um, and we were like the, one of the very first arcades to run them. Really cool. We ran a tournament on them. Total success. Oh, People loved great. them. I mean, it's been good. Burger Time, another launch game. Um, we also had a huge event <laughs> celebrating Burger Times. I don't even know. Was it the 35th? It must have been the 35th anniversary. We had a, a burger stand outside just to celebrate Burger Time. And hot dog costumes. <laughs> it's true. Attacks. Um, Probably one of the best puzzle games ever. Oh, absolutely. In, 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 I mean, and it's a dedicated cabinet. Uh, our tech... Slight uh, well, modification <laughs> to our control panel. So our tech loves this game so much. He, f he found some ways to improve it. Those LEDs in the balls, amazing. It plays great. It is probably one of the games that I was most skeptical about putting out that has been so successful. Really awesome. Viper Phase 1. <laughs> Somehow a launch game that's still here. Um, it's like this game gets better with age. It's a game that seems ridiculous at first, but it is so fun to play because you can explode everything on the screen. Right, it's, it's, it's kind of bullet hell-ish. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. It gets absurd, especially as you get into the game. And on free play, you just keep ma matching the credits. So you just keep jumping back in. But at the height of it, it you feel like totally in control. It's really, I mean, there's a reason it's one of the most successful shmups of all time. Um, and we just, we have never been able to take it off the floor. We've had other shmups. We've had higher rated shmups, but Viper Phase 1 survives and people love it. Final Fight, another <laughs> launch game. Um, and try as we might to find another beat em up that is as pure as this, we can. Um, we've had Double Dragon on the floor. We've got a Double Dragon over in Arlington. Final Fight just seems to do a little bit better. It's amazing, it's pure, it's more fun. Everyone knows it's more fun, it's awesome. This exact version in a Williams cab, a weird laminate. We've had it forever and it's <laughs> awesome and people love it. And people play it every day. Uh, all uh, right, so totally common game here. Oh, God man. Leaves Reactor, probably one of 200 in the entire world. Um, certainly 200 that are still working with the original board set, original power supply, and it's on free play. All working buttons. I mean, it's insane. Look at the lights on the buttons. It's amazing. That's been there for 30 plus years. Um, one of the hardest games we have. Oh, absolutely. People cannot, like, you play this game once, you play this game 10 times, you still don't have an idea of what's going on, but you know it's beautiful and special. Right? Um, and I mean, it's awesome. We're totally proud to have it on the floor. I mean, we had a dedicated Major Havoc earlier. We have a dedicated Gottlieb Reactor. Uh, 
neither of those were launch games because we didn't think they were even possible. <laughs> we didn't even think that we could put these games on the floor. We were, we were too worried that people would destroy them. So. But it's really something special to see someone who's never played this game walk up and experience it for the first time. It's, it's a, insane that we have it. <laughs> All right, maximum hang time. Uh, uh, disputedly the best of the NBA <laughs> Jam progeny. Um, we just put this out actually today, Ooh, right? And, and we we tweaked this, we rebuilt it. This actually just replaced Simpsons today. Um, Simpsons will probably be coming back, but Maximum Hang Time. That's how we met Chris Delp. Chris Delp is our community leader. He owns every record that has <laughs> ever existed on Maximum Hang Time. He's the best Maximum Hang Time player in the world. One of the best NBA Jam players in the world. And here it is. You can play it for like two or three days. And then it's gone. It's going to be a replace. If you want a real challenge, come by Free Play Arcade and challenge Chris Delp to a game. I don't think he's lost in 10 plus years. All right. And then we have one of the coolest dedicated three player games of all time. Three track balls, Rampart, a building strategy puzzle, shoot -em, shoot -em. puzzle game. It's all so cool. All of the tournaments we've ever had on this have been one of the, some of the most exciting events we've ever had. Period. People love this game. I mean, as soon as you start uh, introducing new people in and turning it into a competition, everyone comes out of the woodwork for this game. Well, and of course, there's totally other versions that other arcades have, and they all suck <laughs> compared to the three trackball dedicated. This is what Atari wanted you to play this game, and every other version is terrible. I can't believe people can play in the world. Hey, another super right, common game. So, Taito Space Gun. This is, we've owned this game before. This is the best version example. These plastics Classic. are always destroyed. It is basically like Alien or Aliens the game. I mean, it, they clearly had that in mind when they built it. They've got really, really cool advanced and backup features. One of the coolest shooting gun games that we've ever seen. Definitely one of the best on rails games. And I mean, this is this is the best example ever. It's it's just so cool. Uh, Centipede, must cla have classic. You gotta have it. Killer Instinct. I mean, a controversial, weird fighting yeah. game, but a lot of fun. And people remember this game. Well, and generally lately, we've been alternating Killer Instinct and Primal Rage. We'll just swap those games back and forth. That seems to keep people happy. Um, Atari Tempest, of I mean, the best early color vector game. I don't care. I mean, Star Wars is awesome. This actually plays better. This is it. Oh, absolutely. It is addictive. It is everything you want in an arcade game. And we have it here. Working just unbelievably. Alpha 3, again, another game we kind of never wanted to put out. We never thought we were going to put out. Um, and now that it is out, we can never imagine a world without it. Um, I mean, the last, the final of the Alpha games, 2D, gorgeous, put in one of our best Dynamo cabs. It's awesome. Space Invaders, totally disrespected nowadays. People need to love this game more. Um, plays really great. It is where arcades started. But it's one that you have to play every time you come to the arcade. And I, I, I can't even get over that people will play this and not think, this is like gaming perfection. They think, oh, it's so rudimentary. I don't know. All right, we got Frogger, another game you have to have. Um, got these original detail right, control right, panel. With the, we've got the tire mark up the side. This one has seen its fair share of plays. I think I, I looked at this 700,000 plays on this Frogger. Um, ultra, ultra high score submitted to the community group. It's just, I mean, it's addictive. It's great. <laughs> Another amazing, dedicated three player cadet. You know, this one's designed, <laughs> it's programmed, it's. Uh, Everything by Michael Jackson himself. Clearly, Michael Jackson knew assembly code and C plus or C regular C, whatever they're programming <laughs> this game in, because this game has been completely made by Michael Jackson. Dedicated, playing great. Um, I mean, rebuilt from the ground up numerous times because it's so popular, um, and it's been moved around a little bit. It's a little warm right now, but it's an awesome game. All right, Crazy Taxi. A game that we have the world record on this game, playing beautifully. Um, we recently in Ditton introduced a stand-up Japanese style, yeah. which people have loved, but they also, I mean, I, re I, I read a review today that said, listen, they have a hundred good games. 
But if you want to play one game that is playing better than every version I've ever seen, you got to play their Crazy Taxi if you're interested. This one is playing great. It's perfect. I mean, world records have been set on this machine, so you have to assume it's good. An important launch game that we kind of, um, like, we've s skirted the controversy for, though. This game, this is the only game oh. that you can drive and shoot at the same time. Uh, Highly that controversial on its release. I mean, you're technically the good guys. Ah. You're technically like Starsky and Hutch or whatever version Tango Lucky and Wild. Tango and Gash. Um, but no matter what, player one, designed to hold the wheel and shoot people while they drive. <laughs> um, this one, we're fortunate to have one of the biggest backstocks in the entire world. Because as you can imagine, this is a super popular game. And it's been wrecked numerous times. Well, and we've got this one with two different art packages. So right now, this one is the US release art package. And we've also got the European release art package. Well, and these are the Euro guns right. on here. And you can tell because they fit these so much better than <laughs> the American guns. Um, but we've replaced the guns numerous times. I mean, we do whatever it takes. It's playing great. It's a totally special game in its time. It shouldn't exist. It's weird. Well, how are you driving and shooting? Or, you know what? My favorite is when they make one of the people <laughs> just drive and then one person handles both guns. <laughs> it's awesome. It's a great game. And I mean, we have to always have a looking wild on one of our arcade floors. Oh, absolutely. All right. So recently, John Carmack, famous for creating Quake, famous for creating Doom, programming everything, came to Freebly Richardson and the game he thought was the best, and I don't blame him at all. Oh, Gyrus. <laughs> Some people call it Gyrus. I'm pretty sure the correct pronunciation is Gyrus because I've been saying it that way for years. <laughs> uh, we have the original joystick. We had to source that special. This is an all original cabinet. I don't even want to hit start because the music will blow the entire <laughs> camera away. Um, this whole arcade cabinet is designed as like one awesome speaker box. Amazing sound, obviously an amazing game. We've had it out here. We get reports all the time about some sort of curse word inscribed <laughs> on it. We actually think it's amazing now. Gyrus is awesome. I think it adds to the charm. Right, this is like a real arcade you'd find in a real arcade Whoa. back in 1989. Um, and here it is in whatever year we are. I don't even know if we live in anymore. Rastan, recent release, awesome game. Um, this one's just beautiful, playing great. Bingo. Oh, game. Bingo, oh yeah, Rastan's tough because you get like, 30 seconds into it and it's just destroying <laughs> Pingo is hey! easily the best game that has ever existed. Certainly everyone, one of Corey's favorite games. Everyone needs to play it a lot more. It's awesome. Um, we generally swap Mappy and Pingo because they're kind of similar in their like audience, they're similar in their vibe. But Pingo is an amazing maze game. It's kind of like Sega's attempt at fixing Pac-Man, and they did a great job. Well, I remember the first one that we owned that we sold and you were so sad about it. Uh, for the ridiculously low price that we sold it for. Right. And we were so happy when we got this one back, or this one in, it's in much better shape than yeah, the one that we dedicated sold. Dedicated original Pingo, rebuilt from the ground up by us, but it's, it plays great, it's an awesome game. Yeah. Great music. Our double Area 51s. Might as well do them as one. So yeah, so we have Area 51 side four. Controversial, I think it's one of the better uh, trainer games because they, they have the different trainer right. missions. Really cool. This is an Area 51. It is absolutely in a primal rage cabinet. <laughs> we know that this Area 51 has always worked perfect. This is the most stable Area 51 we have ever seen, and we are too afraid to take it out and put it in the proper cabinet. If you've been to Free Play Arlington or Free Play Din, you've seen an Area 51 in a dedicated cabinet. It looks identical to this Site 4 cabinet, but we will never touch this one. <laughs> it has worked. It's been my it's my favorite Area 51 experience <laughs> of my entire life. Yeah, it's a primal rage cabinet, but it's awesome. It's beautiful. We had to add some fans and stuff, but this is the one. <laughs> this is the one. It uh, is accurate, and we never have to calibrate those guns. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, two Atari System oh, One games in a row. Game. Road Blasters. I a lot of free player arcades have put this game out and have quit almost immediately because it's so hard to keep them going. Um, Sourcing and, those buttons. Well, and also Road Blasters in general is not generally, it's not considered like a top tier system one game. It's no Marvel Madness. You're not, well, and <laughs> when, we, when we do the same walkthrough in Arlington, we'll get to some of the really sub games. But Road Blasters is nowhere near the Marvel Madness level of prestige. But it's probably one of the best racing games of that era, of the mid 80s. And I mean, not only that, you get to shoot stuff. <laughs> it's perfect, it plays great. 
We have a world record set on this by Keith Carlson. He's never submitted it. I don't know why, but he's still working on improving it. Yeah, he wants even a better score. Um, and then, of course, Marble Madness, yeah! a two player trackball racing game. If there is, I mean, there are lots of great date games here. I don't know if there's a better date game than Marble Madness, especially if you want to strangle <laughs> the person in front to free player a game. It's, it's just, but it's so rare to see in an, an arcade like this. And I mean, with a perfect, two perfectly working trackballs, two plays a perfect monitor, I mean, we rebuilt this. I hand rebuilt this with my like blood, sweat, and tears, and it plays great. And I'm so proud of it. It's so cool to have an arcade. It's the I only mean, it, version I've uh, actually beat. Right, and it's right next to. I mean, it's right next to Road Blasters. You get to see the cabinets transition. These are kits for the exact same game, just changed and complete. It's, it's so cool. Uh, we're always trying to find really interesting four-player games. Um, we've had Tower of Doom. We've had Shadow over Mistara. We're on Shadow of, over Mistara right now. It, it's a little more stable. It plays a little cleaner. Um, and it, I mean, it's an awesome four-player game. And this one has been rebuilt by us so many times. You can look at the buttons. These are the original button colors, original stick colors. It's, I mean, it's really crazy. And clearly, player one and player two are playing a little bit more than player three and player four <laughs> because player one and player two are gone. They are completely rubbed off, but it's, it's really, really cool. Um, and when you think about kind of some of those beat em up the four player Simpsons and Turtles and stuff like that, Dungeons and Dragons is actually better. Oh, absolutely. It, it's, it's hard to get people to get into it. it. It takes a little bit more work learning the menus, getting right. through all well, of the Well, most people don't tasks. have the same level of nostalgia, but this version, this game right here in front of us is just superior and amazing. And I mean, just we can just keep doing this game after game. <laughs> this lineup is insane. Uh, there's so many games here that we never thought we'd be able to put out. Oh, absolutely. So many games that we thought people would just not be into, that they've just loved them as much as us. And I think Shadows of War Mastara is exact is in that category. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're gonna go check out some more games. Woo! Okay, so this game is kind of famous <laughs> in free play lore because D Magazine famously did a review <laughs> of free play. I almost forgot about that. And said, where's Turtles? It's right here. This is a ground up rebuild turtles. Um, I mean, what's really amazing is we have the correct Wiko purple stick. We've had to source green buttons because we were so hardcore. These are leaf switch green buttons that are completely the original buttons, but they're the wrong color. They're supposed to be purple, they're still, but they're green. But I mean, we rebuilt this like by hand. I remember y'all applying the side art. During the art package? Yeah, I remember personally doing this monitor. Um, this is where Turtles was. We've released it. I think Turtles is probably my favorite of the uh, uh, Konami Brawler four-player games. Sunset Riders is really great too. Um, but Turtles will always be here. Turtles is probably one of those ones that's locked. And what's really interesting is we have Turtles in Time at our other locations, but this is the location that has the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's been right here in this spot for so long, I don't even <laughs> want to touch it. Like, I'm concerned that if I do this, it's going to break. <laughs> um, but it's a it's a classic. Everyone loves it. It's probably the best. I mean, jeez, this is tough. <laughs> a three-player CBS2 Alien vs. Predator in the sunken little... I mean, because so this is a big blue that's yeah. sunken for Aliens vs. Predator. An original black cabinet, three-player Capcom CBS2. Um, oh, and it's just kind of hidden back here. I forget about this game. People wow. come and play it all the time. Oh well, yeah, though. this is the only place you can play it. This is one of the only places in the entire world you can play this game. Um, certainly with an original cartridge, or in, in the original format that Capcom wanted you to play it. it with the CPS2 original, not converted. Uh, it, and I mean, it's gorgeous too. Oh, so absolutely. beyond all of that, it's like in great condition. Just unbelievable. Uh, Trilogy. Trilogy. Trilogy has a really fun story, really fun game. It's not, you're never gonna consider it, I mean, it's not on the same level as the original Star Wars arcade. With that color vector, it's amazing. But this is a totally fun game that was not captured at all by the ports that came to the consoles or the computers. So if you want to play this game in its original glory, you gotta come in the arcade. Everyone just wants to do the lightsaber battle. That's I mean, true. let's be real. You start it up. It. I mean, it, it's pretty authentic. It's pretty realistic. Asteroids, uh, another launch game. You can't get over. How we, can you have an arcade without an asteroids? What's really great is we have a totally brand new piece of metal here that's been silk screened 
and we can't change it because this one's been so good to us. <laughs> it's, it's, I think this is more beautiful than a brand new one. It shows where the hands have set. I mean, this monitor, we've, we, we've done a ton of work to it, but the original XY black and white monitors are so cool. Look at the, the, the trail. trail effect on that bullet. Just insane. Xevious. I mean, really amazing That's music. Terrible the, at this game. One of the very first <laughs> shooter games, especially kind of shmup style games. Um, it, it's controversial because people get into that loop in their head. That music just keeps playing. But it's where we all came from, and you know, at Free Play, we always remember where we came from. A Play Choice 10. Uh, we've got a ton of cool stuff on here. I don't even know how many Play Choice 10 cartridges we have anymore. We have all of the original Play Choice 10s, plus a couple like really cool special things that we brought in, like Bubble Bobble and stuff. Um, but like, if you want some extra bonus arcade gaming that you didn't even know existed, you can come here and play Side Bike. I mean, Russian Attack, Kung Fu, Super Mario Brothers, Tennis, Trojan, Mario Brothers 3, which is probably the most popular. Because, I mean, that, everyone's played that a million <laughs> times. It's awesome. Time Pilot, relatively recent release, right. um, with the original stick. It, it's another thing that's just, it's so original and authentic. And this has become pretty popular, pretty big lately with our community group. People going for high scores. Well, everyone was playing 84 so much we had to throw uh, original in. Right, so yeah, we have Time Pilot 84 right now at Arlington. This is the original Time Pilot. Uh, now that's that's a tough debate which one you prefer, but uh, you can't see it right now. You travel through time in this game, it gives you the future. It's awesome. We've got the original joystick here, and what you're about to see, and this is what's so amazing, <laughs> we have three more original joysticks on Rampage. <laughs> um, and what's really cool is, you know, we will run events for companies and we recently ran an architecture event and we got to have them have a tournament <laughs> on Rampage destroying buildings, <laughs> eating the people inside buildings. Uh, I mean, Rampage is an all-time classic. It's the perfect three-player game to have people just go at each other. Um, and I mean, it's not a launch game, but it's been here for a long time. Oh, yeah. We did uh, World Tour was our launch. Yeah, World Tour was a launch game. World Tour is now at Arlington, I think. I think the so. original Rampage is here. Who knows? Awesome. Move stuff so often. Absolutely. All right. So the next game we have coming up, which I mean, <laughs> this is a game that they said would never be on a free play floor on a on a free play arcade where you can play as much as you want. Hydro Thunder, easily, easily a top ten earner during the nineties. Um, just unbelievable. We've rebuilt this monitor a gazillion times. If I was exaggerating before, I'm not now. <laughs> because this monitor has killed us. But here it is, playing great. We have world records on numerous courses. Um, and I mean, this is one of my favorite games just to see played because people come, they see this at a free play and they think that's not even possible. There is definitely is. some hefty competition on all of the tracks here. I mean, some of our uh, community members who never even thought that they would, th th this is not their type of game recently got into it and they're setting some of the most amazing scores I've ever seen on this game. All right, and then we have Sky Cursor. Woo! A new retro arcade game. Shout out um, to Griffin Aerotech. Yeah, we're, we're totally proud of Griffin Aerotech Sky for the, their airframe technology. It's awesome. We have we have been in the competition. We've kind of fallen behind lately um, in terms of the world records and stuff because our, our players used to be right up there. They're not right now. We need to get back into it. We have a whole nother Sky Cursor to come out in the near future. Um, but this is something that we're really proud of because it's a brand new game that our community has totally supported um, and because it's so good. And that I, I think that kind of taught us a lesson that if it's a really good game, it doesn't matter how old it is. Right. Well, it, it plays and it feels like it fits in with all of the other games in our arcade. So the fact that it came out in, what, 2015 right. was the development for it? Well, and the latest patch was this year. I mean, the big patch was 2018. It became a final release. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it's been awesome. We're really proud to have it, and I think it's still, I mean, it's still one of the most popular games in our game. Absolutely. 
Blitz 2000 Gold. Yeah. There's such a huge debate as to which <laughs> Blitz. We have Blitz 99 at uh, Arlington. Blitz 99 seems to be the most played. Blitz 2000 Gold was the final release. This was supposed to be their premiere. I think it's the best, but it's it's definitely controversial. I don't know. I'm going to have to debate you because 99 has the cartridge system. Oh, it's true. If you own a Nintendo 64, 99 is better because you can save your game <laughs> on your Nintendo 64 save cartridge. All right, so this is a, a universal ladybug, dedicated uh, and beautiful condition. Um, probably doesn't deserve to be this far back in the arcade because it is in mint condition in terms of these ladybugs. It's the best I've ever seen. Um, and Ladybug, of course, is like a, a great take on the Pac-Man May style games. Um, but I mean, look at the art package, just unbelievable. And Universal, of course, made Mr. Do one of my favorite games <laughs> ever. And there is a dedicated Mr. Do in this. We had the, the dedicated Mr. Do cocktail over there. Uh, so I just, I feel total like, I'm totally in love with this game just for the environmentals of it all. A dedicated Ghosts and Goblins, I, it's, there are, a lot, there are a lot of Ghosts and Goblins in the world. There are very few dedicated cabinets. This is what Ghosts and Goblins was supposed to look like when it was released in America. I think they got to like 400, 500 cabinets made before they just switched to complete. They got sued, they got into all this litigation. <laughs> Doesn't matter, this is what the dedicated Ghosts and Goblins looks like. We have some amazing players. Oh, I mean, absolutely. We have people that have beat this game one credit, easy, no big deal. Well, Set some of the highest scores ever in the world. Considering and it's really you impressive. Beat the entire game once, <laughs> end with the right, right weapon, and then beat the entire game a second time before you actually win. I mean, got to be one of the most brutal games in the arcade. Oh, easily. And what's really great is I've almost made it past the first level. <laughs> like, everyone's really excited because one day I'm going to get past that first level. Yeah. Crystal Castles. He's uh, never played it before. Yeah. If I ever ask you to bet on a game, don't bet me on Crystal Castles. I am a top tier Crystal Castles player. It's awesome. We've rebuilt this uh, ball a million times. It's actually a relatively new ball, as you can tell, because the light, you can see clearly through it. <laughs> if you see one of these old ones in an old arcade, it gets really fuzzy and difficult to see as it gets dirty. But I mean, Crystal Castles is at the back of our, it's so crazy. Like, Crystal Castles wasn't a launch game, it was an early game, but man, it's a great one. <laughs> um, so this is our... Slightly strange. So this is our Big Blue that used to be here, playing Super Turbo, one of our original Super Turbo cabinets. Um, Super Turbo, of course, got the awesome Versus City at the front. <laughs> so we've been kind of playing with this, we need to get a new marquee. This is playing Third Strike. Um, it has custom installed Sanwa joysticks that are totally custom in terms of their playability, We've received a number of reviews from professional Street Fighter players that say these joysticks are the best. Still has American buttons, which I think are hilarious and yeah. awesome, um, but it, it's one of the best ways to play Third Strike, period. And here it is, just kind of hidden in the back of the arcade. It's a secret game. Uh, we'll get more serious about Third Strike soon, but man, it's how cool is it that this is like just kind of a backup game that we have right now? This is amazing. And, Speaking of backup games, ha! this is the least popular game in the entire arcade. But I love it. Yeah, I mean, Exidy's Venture, this is a dedicated captain. Really, really cool. It gets, I mean, on it's a week- hard. It, on a weekday, it gets 10 to 20 plays at best, at most. Um, it's kind of like a Berserk slash maze game. Um, really, really cool. Um, nice dungeon crawl. Right, totally different than anything that exists in the modern world. So we put it out. It's not popular at all. <laughs> it's still out though, so play it while you can. Um, I'm gonna play it whether you do or not. Yeah, it's probably gonna be on the floor for a limited time, but it's it's still out for six, it's been out for six months or so. Yeah. Okay, so here's one of our launch pinballs. Went away forever, and then we rebuilt it. It's just like a lot of our stuff. Rebuilt it from the ground up, brought it back. Um, many people called this the last great pinball for a long time. Uh, especially when I was in high school, because this came out in the late 90s. I went to high school in 2000, 2001, 2002. I mean, this was this was it. No one was ever going to release another good pinball. And then we're about to go see the next great <laughs> pinball after this. But Revenge from Mars, the sequel to Attack from Mars, is a great pinball. Has the cool uh, CRT that you can see as a reflection in the glass. Really, really cool. Uh, Ivan Stewart's Off-Road. One of the most popular games from my childhood. Yeah, and this is like, this is the game that just existed in the back of random businesses that you would never expect to see arcades. Here it is. 
every single skating rink I went to as a kid, we played this for hours well, and hours nonstop. Well, and it, it was perfect. Like, free play takes a little bit away from it because it was so good as a quarter eater. <laughs> you put an extra quarter in there, you get more power ups and stuff. Well, and then, then you, you're wrecking your friends. You beat all of your friends. Right. They don't have the money. You know, they ditch out. But here it is. We play all night. We, we've had great tournaments. We've we've stayed up here really late playing this game. Um, here it is, working great. I mean, it, it's just it's so hard to keep going through these games because they're so good. Okay. Uh, and it, you forget about them because we have, I mean, we have three arcades now. It's just, I mean, here we go. This is a mint Woo! baby Pac-Man. Um, <laughs> recently ground up rebuilt on the monitor, um, sourced a new old stock monitor, and it looks so, so good. Um, when we've had near world record games, the community group's been playing this recently. It's amazing. Hybrid arcade game pinball. Uh, I can't even get over. Like, you can just walk up to this and hit start. <laughs> All you had to do is pay a while ago $10. You played a ton of games, and then boom, Baby Pac Man is here working perfectly, ready for you. This is just crazy. I mean, this is so cool. Free play is so cool. <laughs> I can never get over that. Um, but yeah, we're going to go play other pinball games after the break, after the jump. Okay, so in 2003, <laughs> Stern made what was the new great pinball, and it was Simpsons Pinball Party. Still considered one of the top 15, top 20 pinballs of all time. Later in the year, same designers made Lord of the Rings, another top 10, top 15 pinball. Really, really amazing. I mean, and people, the theme is a little controversial, but I mean, at this point, is Simpsons really that controversial? <laughs> it's an amazing pinball. Everyone who plays it loves it. And then we have right next Whoa! to it the best pinball of all time, maybe. Maybe. maybe I, mean, mad, I mean, yeah. Always we, debatable. We'll, we'll have to wait three pinballs to see whether or not <laughs> it's the best ever. So we have Medieval Madness here. Uh, this is the the original remake um, that we run. All like, I mean, we've preserved the screen. We haven't upgraded any of that stuff because we think that the original game was perfect. All right. Uh, and so does everyone else. Uh, no one no one thinks any of the, the hacks and modifications that came out later improved it at all. This is the original game just remade uh, a few years ago. And it plays great. It's amazing. We've just an elegant and flowy design to this game. What's amazing is people come up to me and they're like, so it's pretty new, so you probably never had to do any work to it. <laughs> we've, we've rebuilt just so many components on this, but it's the, one, it's the best, pen, it's maybe the best pinball of all time. Uh, we have to, we, it, we have to keep it up. And... Well, when the manufacturers themselves are asking us why we need replacement <laughs> parts for a game, we know that our pinball gets played a lot. Yeah, so we put this out, I think, 18 months ago. It cro it's far past 100,000 plays already. Uh, amazing. So this is our newest pinball. Uh, and people are thinking this could be a top 10 pinball of all time. We, we normally wait a few years before the ratings settle, but Iron Maiden just came out. And that's what free play does best. We've got all sorts of just a variety. We never have just new pinballs, but we always have the newest and best pinball. This is considered the newest and best. So of course free play has it. Iron Maiden, I mean, the people who like Iron Maiden will come here and just rock out. I've seen people not even playing this pinball, they'll start the pinball, and then they'll just start strumming their fake into <laughs> their air guitar, just jamming out. But it's a really cool pinball, it's really neat. Um, I think it's probably in my top 30. Some people think it's gonna be one of the top five. I don't know, we're gonna see. Um, Fishtails, yeah. recent replacement because uh, Star Trek Next Generation, fit it. Has some weird stuff going on. Boom. Fishtail is probably the most underrated pinball of all time, even though it's 28th of all time. I think this is a top 20 pinball. The most flowy game that I think exists. If it didn't have a goofy redneck Fishtails thing, <laughs> it might be top 10. I don't know. I think that the double ramp feature in the center of the playfield, I mean, once you get into the groove, you can just flow that ball for forever, again and again and again, until you get to the. Uh, Nice little arcade game that you get to play with the flipper buttons. Right, right. I mean, this is. I mean, that's that's kind of great because, again, we went from this is you know your early '90s. That's brand new, made in the last three months. I, that's the kind of pinball lineup I love, and I mean, thank God I'm the president of Free Play because I get to make these lineups. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. And then we get all right. So this is now considered the best pinball of all time. Maybe Madness is number two, uh, maybe number three with Twilight Zone, which is the <laughs> game that this game replaced because we had Revenge from Mars out on the floor. This is Attack from Mars. It's amazing. I mean, I I can't even, like, there's no other way to describe I it. I want to hate, hate it because I love Medieval Madness. 
uh, I'm kind of new to Attack from Mars, but every time I play Attack from Mars, I'm like, geez, this is so good. Yeah, I mean, and that's it. That's either this or Medieval Madness is probably the best pinball of all time. They're both here at Freeplay Richardson. One of my um, favorite things is when people walk up and they're not familiar with any of these games, and they say, you know, I'm not sure. I really like that Attack from Mars, but I'm not sure. I also, that Medieval Madness, one of those two is right. probably like my favorite, but right. I don't know. Right, and they have no idea they're playing the two top <laughs> pinballs of all time. Um, and yeah, that, that seems to be it, which is really cool because they have unique themes. They're not just tied to like Iron Maiden, which is a great pinball, but that's tied to a band. It has those connotations in your head. Simpsons are the same way. Both of those pinballs might be top pinballs, they don't, they don't. They don't exist independently. They're not independently themed. Attack from Mars: Medieval Madness, totally their own thing. Really cool. I don't mean, those are our games. It's this is so cool. We're gonna. I mean, obviously, we gotta do this at every arcade. Um, but Attack from Mars, maybe the best pinball ever. We'll have to wait and see. We'll see what everyone else says because I think that's customers matter more. Uh, but God, it's so much fun to play. Alright guys, this was our summer 2018 walkthrough of Free Play Richardson. We're going to be doing walkthroughs of all our other arcades, all our future arcades, but in the meantime, check out our YouTube channel, subscribe, click that bell notification, but for now, we're out from Free Play Richardson.